says, joined together in perfect unity. It says, look at how much encouragement you found in your relationship with the Anointed One. You are filled to overflowing with his comforting love. You have experienced a deepening friendship with the Holy Spirit and have felt his tender affection and mercy. So I'm asking you, my friends, that you be joined together in perfect unity with one heart, one passion, and united in one love. Walk together with one harmonious purpose and you will fill my heart with unbounded joy. Be free from pride-filled opinions for they will only harm your cherished unity. Don't allow self-promotion to hide in your hearts but in authentic humility. Put others first and view others as more important than yourselves. Abandon every display of selfishness. Possess a greater concern for what matters to others instead of your own interests. And consider the example that Jesus, the Anointed One, has set before us. Let his mindset become your motivation. Good morning. Welcome to the Tree of Life Church. Hey guys. I think it's time for us to kind of just prepare ourselves. I know that we've been praying for 20 minutes, but I just kind of feel like that this is a, just to stand with me for a second and let's open with prayer. And, and I, I want to I wanna do something I think that's, that's unique in the sense of saying, I believe this is, this is the day that God wants to do something very special. And I believe that he wants you to step out. And I want to say this in a different way. Sometimes we're so comfortable in our comfort zone that we don't realize that the Holy Spirit wants to challenge us to step out of our comfort and step into his comfort, if that makes sense. So if we can just pray real quick and just ask God to bless. I know more people are going to be coming in. I thank the Lord for this awesome praise team, these people that are going to lead us into worship, and we just want to open our hearts and our lives to what God wants to do. We want to worship Him in spirit and in truth. So Father, we come right now. We ask that, Lord, there's things that you've laid on our hearts. There's things that you've spoken into our spirit. There's things that you've declared over us. 
And sometimes we're waiting for you, but you're waiting on us. Lord, you've actually asked us to step out. You've actually asked us to get out of our comfort, out of our flesh, out of our selfishness, out of our, our mind. And get into your mind, into your heart, into your spirit. And Lord, I just set the service aside. We set our selfishness aside. We set our self-centeredness aside. And we want you to be the center, the focus. Jesus Christ is going to be the focus of this service. Holy Spirit, you are going to be leading us and guiding us. God the Father, we thank you for just blessing us and allowing your love to flow through our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise you, God. You are worthy of praise. So we're going to, we will worship. Some of our songs today are going to say, I will, I will worship. I will trust. I will give you praise. So today, no matter what you've been through this week, we're going to lay it aside right now. We're going to say, I will give God the glory and worship and praise that he deserves, right? So join us.
Come on, give the Lord praise. God wants to have fellowship with us, common unity. We were dead in our trespasses, and he brought life into us. So if the ushers would come and we'll uh, take care of this, we don't have closed communion. So anyone who is here, you can participate with us. Uh, as long as you have a relationship with Christ, you long for a relationship with Christ, and you're honest with that relationship with Christ. Because we want you to experience His love again today in your life. So during prayer time, we had the scripture that was being read, and I would like for it to be read again. So Ella, can I borrow your microphone? I will promise I'll give it back to you. So, oh, is she taking care of communion? So we're doing both, huh? I'm, ta I'm taking someone away from communion. This is out of um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning in verse 14. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all. Therefore all died, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new is come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. I, I love this part. I mean, I think that we need to just identify with it again today. When Christ died, he died for all and all died. That includes us. In a sense, we need to identify with that. But also, if he died for us, he also rose Amen. for us. And this is the thing. We, we have a choice here to stay in our old nature, in our old ways, in the... You know, it says we're half dead, if that's another word. But when we become Christians, when we follow Christ, when we honor him, we become alive yes. through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And that resurrection power. So we died with him. And that's one of the reasons we're doing this. But we also rose with him. He was the first fruits of all of us. And now we can live in newness of life. I just want to encourage you that if you're having a difficult time in your life right now, just say goodbye to that old thing, that death, and say it's buried and I am being resurrected today in newness, in newness of life. We want to make sure everyone has communion, so I want to make sure that if there's someone who does not have it, we want to make sure that all of you can participate with us. And I believe right now, I want to tell you something. If we say this, that the old man is dead and the new man is alive, in this moment when we're taking communion, if there's sickness, if there's struggles, if there's heart issues, if there is, so I've, uh, this, people are having headaches. Anybody relate to headaches? God wants to remove those today. We were praying earlier. Somebody had some issues with their hands. Anybody got issues with their feet? I'm just telling you, anybody got issues with their backs? 
This is a time just to receive the resurrection power of Christ into our lives. Receive his amazing healing power. And this is one of the things that we want to do. In the night that he was betrayed, he lifted up the bread, which represented him. He is the bread of life. He was broken for us, divided for us. He died for us. He conquered hell, death, and the grave for us. He conquered disease and sickness for us. Lord, we receive gladly you into our lives. Take and eat. Atonement, healing, forgiveness, grace. Lord, let it flow in this place. We just ask for your presence to move among us, Lord. In the same manner, he lifted up the cup and he said, I'm making a new covenant. I'm giving you a new life, a new beginning, new health, new strength, new wisdom. Lord, we receive gladly the finished work of Christ. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus. Take and drink. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you would, just pass the communion cups into the center, and they will be collecting them. And I want to just ask you to do something with me. I would like for you to stand, and I'm, I'm being serious when I say this. I want you to stand. If you had back problems, check it out. If you had a, a foot issue, check it out. If you had hand issues, check it out. If you had a headache, check it out right now. Shoulders, check it out. I'm serious. Check it out and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your healing. Thank you, Lord, for your healing. Check it out right now. Just praise him. Thank him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 How great is our God.
feel comfortable with this, but if God's touched you today, if God's healed you today, the thing is that sometimes what we need is a witness, a testimony, uh, and an awareness. If you sense that God healed you or touched you, I don't just come to the front and stand right here with me. I mean, I, I know that I'm doing a bold thing when I say this, but I believe that God's word is true. And I believe when we say certain things and declare certain things that they actually happen. Okay, so I want to I wanna make sure that we are aware of this, that we're declaring it. And we're not trying to draw attention to individuals, we're trying to draw attention to the Lord. Because what happens so often with us is this, we talk about prayer. And then when we pray, but we don't testify, we don't glorify. We don't let other people say there's something happening in this place. There's something happening inside of us. There's something happening inside of us. So I'm just going to, just a couple of, I mean, I'm not going to ask everybody. I'm just asking you a couple of, what, what's going on? Um, I believe I have carpal tunnel. My hands keep going numb in my sleep. And uh, I drive a, a pump truck all day, a big truck. And uh, I think the vibration, just repetitive motions is causing it. And stress and just other stuff. But I declare healing. My name is Judy Sesfold, and I was recently told I had an incurable liver disease. And you know what? I said, my doctor's better than your doctor. <laughs>
Even if we can't feel it, you're working. Even if I don't see it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even if we don't see it, you're working.
But you already knew that, because everybody knows you. All right. Anyway, um, if you are a first time guest here, we welcome you. We know that there's many churches that you could be visiting and we're happy to see you. We do have connect cards in the front pocket of the seats. Please fill one out. And as Andrew says, you can get mugged afterward if you turn your um, connect card in. So again, we just welcome all of you. Some exciting news. Yesterday, there was a yard sale, and I was told that there was more than $2,000 raised for missions. So that is exciting. And I will tell you that John and I got a couple pieces, and um, I am really excited. Very nice things, thanks to Dana. Alrighty, so we get to clean the Life Center again next Saturday, the 22nd, at 9.30 to whenever it gets completed. So, anybody that would like to help out, I know last time they, it, it was beautiful, and I'm not so sure what's going to happen again. However, surprise, and just show up and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I have to put my glasses on, sorry. Alrighty, um, oh, John, we'll be doing this. Putt-Putt Golf, February 28th, 5.45 p.m. Oh man, you gotta come and play. It is so much fun and uh, John and I always compete who gets the most holes in one. And I tell you, I got him beat. Anyway, Andrew, where is the putt-putt golf? Right down the street. We're meeting here, and they're having hot dogs and some different things, and then we're going there. Okay, well, does everyone know where right down the street is? Yeah. Uh, I'm clueless, so I'll follow the rest of you. Who? Oh, okay. Okay, well, you all know where it is. We'll find you. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. Alrighty, and then the next exciting news is there is a men's conference, March 6th and 7th at New Hope, and there's sign-up sheets out front, I gather. And is there any more? Um, oh, right there it is. I don't have to talk, you just read the sign. Okay. I don't understand what the second string. The first string didn't show up, so we're kind of learning this as we go. Andrew said, "Just do it." So we're doing we're doing it. Well, is it confusion? Yeah, but this is your most exciting time, John. I always have to hold my one ear because John just gets really excited about this. I'm going to let you hold this speaker uh, because I have to get my phone out of my pocket. Okay, hold the mic. I mean the mic, yeah, that too. Anyway, <laughs> I just want to say, like, for years, I really had, um, I chose to have struggles with tithing, and then I realized that once I started tithing that, wow, things happened. So I picked out um, Matthew um, 6, 1 through 4, and it says, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with your trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly, um, uh, truly, truly, where are we? Oh, okay, yay, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> truly, um, or surely I say to you, they have a reward. Thank you, thank you. See, see when you give what happens? It, it comes. All right, so go ahead, John. 
Okay. Father God, we thank you that we are so blessed. Uh, these years we've felt your blessing ever so much. That we can return to you something to support this ministry and to support the way we reach people and touch their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. church. Amen. It belongs to him. It doesn't really belong to us as much as we are just participating. We're part of the body. Did they, all of you get a little love? Did, did all of you get some love? Anybody that did not get some love? If you did not get some love, you know, okay, come here. Yeah. And there's more love out there, so if the ushers can make sure that you get some love. If you have not received one at the end of the service, you can also receive some more love. Uh, uh, you know, it's not nice for the pastor to kiss everybody, so we give him two kisses. <laughs> and I think I think Carol and Julie for doing this. They did a great job with that. And just hold on. <laughs> our greatest, our greatest Valentine, our greatest Valentine, Carol. Yes, Carol, right there. Carol and Julie, right there. Those two. That's why you got two kisses. Uh, just uh, might wanted to make sure that, that everybody is blessed and that our greatest Valentine is Jesus Christ who gave his life so willingly and freely. So we are in a series and I want to uh, just make sure that before I get into that, I want to, there's an Israeli conference next Sunday afternoon here in town, which I don't know if many of you, if you would like to participate in that, there's sign up for it uh, and uh, and uh, you need to check it out. Uh, it's Israeli conference. I think it's from three until six o'clock. It's uh, twenty bucks or so. If you're interested, participate in that. And, and the team that's going to Israel, I'm encouraging all of you to go to that. You just need to register today because that needs to happen. And uh, so, let's stand and let's get ready for the word of God this morning. It's good to see all of you here. We have uh, people from every parts of the world around here. Hey, those Canadians that I wanted you to meet, those Canadians, those Canadians are sitting right there. Those Canadians sitting right there. Those Canadians right here. These two Canadians need to meet each other. And we got Josh. Josh's father is with us from, uh, from Ohio. And he's so glad that he's from Ohio right now. Because when he left, it was 11 degrees. So, and all of you that are here, just an honor to have you. We are wanting to really understand this in a deeper way i'm asking the lord to, to, to deepen my understanding in this and if we look at luke and uh, I'm, I'm gonna put it in the message translation so um i'm waiting when it shows up well, there it is hi it's amazing how this stuff works isn't it i remember the old days when we used to have slides you know you had to push them in and everything what about the overheads? Remember the overhead? You remember the old hymnals? You know, yeah. it's like, turn to page. Well, see, now we can just do this. So this is the message translation, just a little bit different, but it's the power of the Spirit that we're talking about. Jesus returned to Galilee. Powerful 
in the spirit. Powerful in the spirit. News that he was back spread throughout the countryside and he taught in their synagogue, in their meetings, places, anyone acclaimed and pleasure. Anyone's acclaim and pressure. Just go back for a minute. I'm going to get this thing right. My dyslexic shows up once in a while. But it says here, he taught in their meeting places to everyone's acclaim and pleasure. I want us to, to, to dig into this just for a second. The reason that God gives us power and the reason that God wants us to live a powerful life is it pleases him and it, it lifts up his name. When we had those healing experiences this morning, that lifts up the name of Jesus. He wants to step out. He wants to do powerful things in our midst. He desires to do that. And so we are going to see more of that in our lives. I don't know about you, but I want God's power to flow through me, through us, through this church, through this city, through this nation, through the world. That's what we want. And you, when you leave this afternoon, when you go home, you have that power that goes with you to acclaim and to just glorify God. So Father, I thank you so much for allowing us to be here, for your spirit to rest upon us, your anointing to rest upon us, to hear, to speak. Lord, we want your will. We want your word to go forth. We want you to be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Turn to someone and say, I'm ready for the power. I'm ready for the power. Thank you for taking care of that place up there. Thanks, Gordon. Thank you. Jim, we got my eyes on you. All right. If we, if we go back to the scripture, and I know that in Luke chapter 4, we talk about this specifically and after this particular verse 14, one of the things that goes on to say to us, at the next verse please, one of the things that we, we see here is that he came to Nazareth where he had been reared. He always was did on the Sabbath, he went to the meeting place. When he stood up to read, he was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it was written. I, I, I want to just emphasize this thing. Sometimes we need to open up the Word of God. Yeah. We need to unroll it. We need to read it and believe it and walk in it. Yeah. And so this is one of the things that it says here next. If you see this, it says, God's Spirit is upon me. And I know we've, we've read this scripture so many times, but I, I kind of feel like that sometimes if the scripture is true... If. Isn't that interesting? If. No. This scripture is true. And when it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he is upon us. He has chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor. Sent me to announce the pardon to prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind. To set the burdened and battered free. To announce this is God's year to act. Amen. God's here. It's our desire, I believe, that the Spirit of God is in us. And what does the Spirit of God in us want to do? It wants to act. It wants to perform. It wants to do that which He has been sent for us to do. You know, I, I know you understand this, but I'm going to say it again. God's gift to this world is Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ's gift to us is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And he wants us to receive him in our lives. And he wants us to act upon this. And so as we read on a little bit more, one of the things that we notice, see, he rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the assistant, and sat down. And every eye in the place was upon him intended. And then he started in. You've just heard scripture make history. I know I chose this for a reason. God wants to make history. And he wants his scripture to be fulfilled in our lives. I mean, okay, let's just say this in a, not, not in a pushy way or anything like that, but what's Naples known for? Oh, it's known for all kinds of crazy things. Like more golf courses, more banks, 
more expensive houses. I mean, I, I mean, what else do you want? Couldn't Naples be known for the Spirit of God and a revival? And let's make history in Naples. He says it came, tr it came true just now in this place. Now, not next year, not five years from now, but now, today. God wants to fulfill these things. And this is one of the, I believe that God wants to make history. You know what history simply means? His story. His story. His spirit moving among us. And his testimonies being acclaimed and glorifying him. So we see that. Let's go on to the next scripture and just kind of see this. In Romans it says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. Well, there's a lot of good restaurants in Naples, right? <laughs> have you, have you had a few of them, you know. Uh, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Again, if we talk about this fasting time that we had, what he's simply saying is, don't just get caught up in your comfort in eating and drinking, because there's more to life than that. There's a reason that we hunger, and there's a reason that we're not satisfied. And I'm going to tell you something. When you eat a nice meal, okay, so... Let's, let's eat a nice meal today, and let's wait till next week to eat the next one. How many of you are going to set, be satisfied with that? No, you want something every day. Every day, you have a hunger. Every day in the natural, you have a hunger. What about in the spirit? Do you have a hunger every day? Or are you satisfied just on Sunday mornings for about an hour and a half or so, and then you go the rest of the week without ever thinking about God again or about the Spirit of God moving in your midst or about Him challenging you at home with your marriage or your relationships or at work or wherever it is or how you come in contact with some of these drivers in Naples and you have to wait through two red lights now. This is the first time ever in the history of me living here that I've had to wait through three red lights or two red lights. And then it's like, it's like people are just, and it's so but the Spirit of God <laughs> wants to move upon me, right? So I can have righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So while I'm waiting at the red light, I can go, hallelujah, Lord, thank you. I got more time to pray. It's going to take me a little longer to get there, so I can have a little bit more prayer time. All right, let's read on. And it says here in Corinthians, but as it is written, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor have entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. I mean, how I many of you know that God loves us? So what does he want to do? He wants, he wants to show us things that we haven't seen. He wants to reveal things, and he wants us to experience things that we have not experienced. But if we don't step out, how many of you want to see some miracles and breakthroughs in your life? Okay, but God has revealed them to us through his what? Through his spirit. I mean, when we read the first part, yes, God loves us, but the way that he will reveal these things is through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Let's read on. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So this is why I need to say, God, Holy Spirit, what do you want to do? What, what is it that you got planned? Instead of going, oh, why is this happening to me? Lord, what are you trying to do? What do you want to do? Show me. Reveal it to me. Spirit, connect with my spirit and make this thing work in whatever way you desire to do it. So he says, accept the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Come on. But the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Freely. What do you mean, freely? You mean, God's got this thing already wanting to take care of us, but we're not stepping out? We're not, we're not, we're just kind of like more letting the world kind of weigh us down and the things of the world, instead of stepping out in the spirit? Instead of just trusting that God might want to use us? Might want to do a miracle through us? Might want to allow the Spirit of God to challenge us to love someone that's not really that lovable or to give somebody some support, maybe give somebody some chocolate who doesn't really need it. <laughs> that's Elias back there. You know. 
just being aware of that. So let's read on a little bit more in this thing. And so in John, it's, in, in 7, it says, On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood up, shouted to the crowd. Now, I want us to understand something. Jesus didn't say something for the sake of just saying it. Okay? The climax of the feast, the Feast of Tabernacles. He, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scripture declares rivers of living waters will flow from his heart. God wants this to take place. Notice what it says next because I think we need to understand it in context. What it goes, it says, when he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit, who would be given to everyone believing in him, but the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. See, I told you that God gave us Jesus. Jesus wants to and has given us the Holy Spirit. But he was prophesying and declaring it over us, saying, this is what I want. I, I, can I... I want to lovingly say this. I want to honestly say this. And I want you to hear me sincerely today. We're not relying on the Holy Spirit like we should. We're not reading the Word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. And God wants us to act upon these things, not be pew sitters. I mean, uh, chair sitters since we don't have pews here. He doesn't want us to be couch potatoes watching miracles on television. He wants us to act out and be a part of miracles. Amen. That's what he wants. And many of us are so comfortable in just coming to church and sensing a little bit of God's anointing, but never stepping into it. And this is one of the challenges of this series for me is I need to personally step out more. Did I step out more today? Oh yeah. Am I going to step out more? Yes. I want to step out more. Let's read on. So this is what it says to us in John. And I want us to kind of get into this. This is, this is one of the first miracles that Jesus did. So this is after he, he, after he called his disciples and he was with his disciples. This is one of the first miracles that we have a recording of. Okay. Now, we know what happened when he came back in the power of the Spirit. Some of the people didn't like him in his own town. He couldn't do many miracles and all that stuff. But here he was, and this is what it says, on the third day. You know what happened on the third day, right? Jesus rose from the dead. So on the third day, this is a, there's so many prophetic words in here. So on the third day was a wedding. Uh, isn't, on, on the third day, weren't we, uh, wasn't he our bridegroom and we are the bride? Yeah. On the third day. Okay, so there's a lot of history here. The mother of Jesus was there. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to, to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, what is, what's wine represent? The spirit. Okay, so just check it. The mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. You know, there's a scripture actually in Acts chapter 19. It says, have you received the spirit since you believed? So we've not even heard of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you something. If you all you want is to be saved, okay. But God wants the Spirit of God to be in you and upon you. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and He has anointed me. He doesn't want the Spirit of God just to be in you. He wants you to be overflowing with it. So let's read on. <clears throat> and Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. I want you to understand this is his first miracle. He says, my time's not come yet. And, I, and, I, and I, when I was reading this and praying over this message, this is what I find interesting about us. Well, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready. I'm not anointed enough. I don't have enough of God in me. I don't know enough scripture to do anything. I, I don't think that God wants to use me yet. I still need to, I need to still warm up. Uh, I, 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 you know, if I, I'm not willing to step out, you know, I, I, I'm kind of afraid that, that, you know, I'm, I'm stepping out into to nothing. But you know what? It's okay. 
Step down. Step out. You're the land. You know, how, how did you learn to walk? You fell a few times. How did you learn to talk? You made some mistakes. How did I learn to preach? Oh, I made lots of them. And I still do. But I step out. Uh, you know, I mean, think about Peter. Uh, uh, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come. I'm telling you what, I'd rather have walked on water for about 10 steps or 15 steps than not walked on water at all. Come on. Oh, oh well, well, I don't want to be embarrassed. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. And get into the spirit of God. So it says here, my time's not yet come. And his mother said to the servants, whatever he says, you do it. You know, simply what this is saying, he is the word. So whatever the word says, do it. Uh, well, if the word says do this, then do it. Uh, and so here it is. Now there were set there six water pots of stone. Again, prophetically, what does this? What does six represent? Man. Man. It represents us as human beings. Six water pots. Okay. So they're made out of clay or stone. You know, they, what are we? We're made out of clay. Okay, six water pots. Okay. And it says, according to the manner of the purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons of peace. These are some, they're my size <laughs> containers. Okay, so uh, do we have a picture up? Do we have that picture? Can we put that picture up real quick and then we'll go back to the scripture? How much water is in your body? An adult, about 60%. Adult female, about 55%. Children, about 65 And infant, 75% of our body is made out of water. Did you know that? Water. I told you, you're a water pot. <laughs> now, and, and I'm teasingly saying this, okay, but which one is the easiest to work with usually? Infants and, and children? They, they have more faith sometimes than adults. The older you get... But I want us to emphasize this with about the Spirit of God. Now, he wants to take our life, who we are, full of water, 60, 55%, you know, depending what we are. And the thing is that he wants us not just to receive it, but I want us to read, go back to the scripture. And I want us to kind of see this a little bit as we go. So he said, Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. They didn't just fill it up halfway or 60%. No, they filled it all the way to the very top. How many of you, if you bought water like this and you noticed it was only half full, what, what would you say? I got ripped off! <laughs> you know, what we want is when we open it up, all the way to the brim. We want it up to the very top. What if you ordered a steak? 12 ounce. And they brought you a 6 ounce steak. <laughs> you say, I'm not paying for this. You know? There's, there's a re God wants us to be full all the way to the top. And some of us are very content just to have a little, just a little of God. Just give me a little bit of God. No, what you need is you need to be filled all the way to the top. So it says, it says here, and he said to them, draw some out now. When, 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 should, we, when should we draw it out? Now. now. Well, it's not my time yet. This is not my appointed time. Oh, yes, it is. It's time to draw on God's promises. It's time to draw out what God has deposited in, a, in us. And he take it to the master of the feast, and they took it. And that, let's read on a little bit more here. And when the master of the feast had tested the water that was made wine, oh, guess what? God will take me if I just give it to him, and, I, and he will change my life from a natural into a spiritual experience if I will let him. You know, this is probably one of the greatest, I don't know about you, but if you understand anything about water, I mean, I can put some dye in there. I can, 
I can pretend like this is a, all of a sudden it's wine, but he made wine, which takes a process. It's a process of, of all kinds of things that have to happen. And he, he says, and it says, it says here too, when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he did not know where it came from. It, it, okay, isn't that the same thing with the Holy Spirit? We say we don't know where the Spirit comes from or where it's, where it's going to go, but we need to rely that the Holy Spirit will flow through our lives. And it says here, not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew and the master of the feast called to the bridegroom. The servants knew. You know why? Because they did what the scripture, what Jesus told them to do. They actually are the ones that saw the greatest miracle. They just saw it right in front of them. And I'm going to tell you something. When you serve, you'll see more miracles sometimes than you even understand. And many of us are afraid to step out and serve. Just serve. And let, oh, well, I, I'm not ready yet. Then serve somehow, and you'll see a miracle. If God says, fill it up to the top, go ahead and fill it up and see what God can do with that. Allow it to take place. But the servants, go back. But the servants who had drawn the water knew. I'm going to tell you something. I know. I have seen it over and over again, and I'm a servant. Of, that's all it is. A minister is a servant. So some of you go, well, this is Minister Andrew DeLong. Okay, I, I can tell you story after story after story of miracles, miracles, miracles. But it takes participation. It takes obedience. It's take, it takes stepping out when sometimes you don't feel like there's nothing there. You step out. Can I tell you that if it was up to me, I wouldn't be a minister because I don't feel like I'm qualified. Think about Moses. Moses says, you got the wrong man. I, I said the same thing. You got the wrong man. You expect me to stand up in front of people and read scripture when I get them all mixed up and torn apart? And I can tell you honestly that the, really the only thing that I can read without any difficulty is the word. Because the spirit of God wanted me to step out. And this is what it says. And he said to him, every man at the beginning sets out good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. Listen, your life before is your life before. Inferior in some ways. But now, with God, it is the best. Amen. The finest. And it's new wine that God wants to give you. And it says, until now. Now is the acceptable year to act. Now is the time to step out. You know what the word, the word faith? The word faith is, now faith is. Not, 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 not faith will be. No, now faith is. The substance of the, the evidence of things that... Without faith, it's impossible to please God because we must believe that God is, not was or will be, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So it says this to us. Now let's go on and uh, just kind of see this thing unfold a little bit. Uh, uh, let's go back just for a second. I want, I want us to understand that this story is about us. This first miracle is not just a miracle that happened there for that purpose. It's for us today. And the reason it's in the scripture is for us to identify with the third day. To identify with Jesus and his word. And whatever the, what the word says, that's what we should do. So we should be servants. And when he says to fill it up to the brim, that's what we should be doing. If he tells us to take it to the master, let's take it. To, do you, can, you, can you imagine this? Okay, here. here I, I, I've, uh, I've got water in here. I've got water in here. And I know it's water because I poured it in there. Yeah, it's water. Just double checking, you know, just making sure. Now, I know it's water. And he says, go take it. And then, I, and then I give it to the master of the ceremony, the one who's in charge of it. I give it to him. And then he tastes it and he says, that's not water. 
And I go, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. Uh, uh, what, what's, what's going on here? What's, what's happening? I knew it was water. See, I mean, can, I, can I tell you something? Sometimes what we do is we look at us in our natural lives. And this is what Jesus even said about himself. And this is what he said. Not, not many prophets are worth much in their own town because we know who they are. We know it's just water. We just we, we know who Scott is. We, we know we know uh, we know John. We we know Carol. We know we know these people. Okay, no no. But when the Spirit of God is upon us, we become something different. God can take something so simple as water and transform it. And all, and all we really think, all we. I gave, I know I gave him water. I know I gave him water. And God says, no, you didn't. Because with me, that which you think is going to happen, it's beyond. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has in store for them who love him. And what does it say? And these things happen by the spirit. By the spirit. I want us to look maybe just uh, one more scripture here and then we'll wrap it up. It says in Acts, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let it be known to you. And heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. I don't know what you're talking about. But this is the interesting thing is God does not want us to settle and he wants us to experience his spirit in our lives. Now, drunk, that's an interesting word here. Uh, DUI, what is that? Driving under the influence. You know, I don't want to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's what I want. I need to have, I want to be driven by the influence of the Holy Spirit. I want to have a DUI, spiritually speaking. I want not to be influenced by wine in excess, but I want to be filled with the Spirit. I want to be under the influence. You will do things under the influence that you normally don't do. And that's in the negative and in the positive. You can actually, I'm telling you, once you're under the influence, there are things that God wants to do through you that you cannot even imagine. He'll make you stand up in a church and preach. <laughs> Let's read on. This is what he has spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and your daughters. We got any sons and daughters here? We got any kids here? We got any young people? Prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. That's why dad falls asleep sometimes. Right? <laughs> I love it. Come on, come on. That was funny. I don't care who you are. <laughs> so it goes on, it goes on, and, and it says, and on my maid servants, and on my on my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. It's time for us. Matter of fact, this is what, this is actually the scripture that is used in the Old Testament and now it's brought into the New Testament because now it has become a reality. Now it is true. And God wants us to prophesy. He wants us to have visions. He wants us to have dreams. He wants us to allow the Spirit of God to flow. So let's fill ourselves up to the brim. And allow not just 50% or 60% or 7 Let's be filled with the Spirit. Let's be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand my heart here? Okay, so read on a little bit more. I think the scripture says, then, let's go down to verse 36. If you can skip down and we'll just not read some of this stuff. Um, it says here, therefore let all... Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Okay? We've just identified with that, with his, uh, 
till I make the enemies a footstool. Let's go on to verse 37. It says, Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter, the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? I don't know if this message cuts you to the heart. But if you're satisfied being in the natural and just being born again, but not allowing the Spirit of God to flow through you, the reason God saved you, the reason God set you free, so you can be a servant of the Most High. So you can go. Matter of fact, he said this with the disciples. He said, I want you to tarry until you're endued with power and then go into all the world and preach the gospel. We just talked about that earlier, a few weeks ago. I want us to understand God's heart here. And it says, it says, cut to the heart. Okay, can I tell you, God's not interested in a physical circumcision. He doesn't care if you got foreskin or not. He doesn't care what flesh you are, what race you are. He doesn't care about any of those things. What he cares about is that your heart has been circumcised. That your heart knows that it needs to cut itself off of the flesh and live in the spirit. That's what he's saying. That's what's being communicated. So what shall we do? Let's live in the spirit. That's what we should do. Let's live in the spirit. That's what we should do. Look at verse 38. It says, Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want you to notice the order. There's an order. It's not always, it's sometimes it's a, it's a part of what God wants to know. He wants you to repent. He wants you to change the way that you live your life. He wants you to be baptized, to identify with Jesus Christ in his death, his burial, and he wants you to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. He wants you. Those are three different distinct acts that he wants from you. And, he, and then he goes on and he says, and he says, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God has called. Far off. I mean, we're far off from, from Jerusalem. We're far off. And we're a few years later, just a few, a few days, maybe 2,000, two days, 2,000 years. The thing is that it's, we're called. How many of you want this experience to take place in your life in a greater way? Then let's allow it to happen today. Let's do it in order, okay? Let's do it in order. Repent. Is there anyone in this place here today? You need to repent. You need to Simply say, I'm tired of living my life. I want to live God's way. And I'm not going to serve myself, but I'm going to serve him. If you're here today and you're that person, you need to repent. And you say, Lord, I, I receive you as my Savior, as my Lord. I repent. I, I don't want to live a selfish life. I want to live a godly life. If you're that person, can you just raise your hand? Let me see your hand. I see that hand. I see that hand in the back. Anybody else? I see that hand. Anybody else? I saw that hand in the back. I see that hand. Listen, it's just a simple acknowledgement. It's an acknowledgement. See, now, the reason you did this, can I please hear me? The reason you did this is because you were under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's it. No, seriously, because I can't make you. I can suggest you should honor God, but the only one that repents is you and the only one that allows that to happen is the Holy Spirit in you. You can't even say the name of Jesus without the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I'm just telling you that you're not, don't just think that you're just water. Don't just think that you're just human, that you're just a failure, that you're just sinful. No, you are a spiritual being. And God is your Father, and He wants to transform you and make you righteousness and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what He wants. And the next thing, how many of you, and I'm just, we're going to have a baptism, we'll have, we'll have a sign-up sheet in the next couple of weeks. How many of you need to get baptized? Come on, the Bible says to, to get baptized, literally to go underwater, to come back up, 
and to be raised in newness of life. That's, that's because we're identifying with his death, his burial, and his... How many of you need to get baptized? Let me see your hand. Come on. Hands all over the place. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a baptism coming up. We'll have a baptism coming up. So let's stand. I want the ministering elders to come. Those of you that raised your hand, just come here. Stand with us. I was talking to Barry. I was talking to Barry about this message a little bit. We were talking about that. And he, that's what he's been doing. He's been serving. And every time you serve, you see miracles. Denise and Barry, they're back in town. They're leaving. They're, 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 they're going out west somewhere now. Go, go west, young man. But I want you to, to, to be aware of this, the importance of what's happening here. Those of you that raised your hand, come stand over here with me. Come on. This is the time where you need to be under the influence. Don't be under the influence of your flesh or your selfishness. And, oh, I don't want to draw attention to myself. Guess what? God knows where you're at. He knows where you're at right now. He knows where you're at in your seat. He knows. But he just wants you to be honest with yourself. Can we pray this prayer together? All over the place, just put your hand over your heart. I want my heart to be circumcised. I want it to be cut off from the flesh. I want to live in the spirit. I don't want sin to rule my life. Lord, you came to set me free from sin, from the stronghold, from slavery. And today, I accept liberty. I accept freedom in my heart. I accept you, Jesus. I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive your righteousness. The joy of salvation. And the Holy Spirit. In my life. Amen. Amen. Just follow me. Now, I'm, I'm telling you that if you've not received the gift of the Holy Spirit, there's a distinct difference between receiving Christ and receiving the Spirit of God in you, but receiving the Spirit of God upon you. If you've not received the Holy Spirit and that gift into your heart, Him, He wants to influence you. He wants to empower you. And I want you to know that these elders are here to pray for you. These ministering elders are here to pray for you. We are here to pray. For you. And I want you to go out of this place. I want you to just go out and say, fill me today. Fill me up to the brim. When you're struggling in anger and frustration, say, empty me out of anger and fill me with your spirit. When you are disappointed, ask God to give you the joy and the hope and the peace. Whatever you're struggling with, let God transform that which is in you from natural to supernatural. Let him fill that water up to all the way to the top and let him change you and turn you into a spiritual being of Jesus Christ. Let him do that. Are we ready to do that? Yes. Let me pray over you, okay? Can you just lift your hands as a sign of being uh, just a, a vessel? Maybe you need six, maybe you need 23 gallons of water just pour down upon you from heaven. It says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh in the last days, the former and the latter rain. So we, we declare this over us, Lord Jesus. We believe you desire to pour out your spirit and we receive gladly what you have for us. We open our hearts, our lives to you. And Lord, we're not, we don't want something religious. We're not interested in following religion. We're interested in following Jesus. We're interested in following your word. We want to go out of this place. We want it to be real in our homes, in our cars, in our work, with our finances. We want the spirit of God to be in charge of all of these things because we willingly yield our lives. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has in store for them that love you. And Lord, we believe that these things are going to be done by your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. And remember, ministering elders, we have a lunch today here. So God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.